are you actually overtraining? Very common question in the fitness community, especially high intensity training. I've noticed a lot of people may believe that they are overtraining and very curious whether or not they are overtraining and potentially inhibiting muscle growth. So let's talk about this. What are the actual symptoms of overtraining? Okay. Now, newcomers to high intensity training may be under the impression that if they are not getting noticeably stronger or measurably stronger, either able to do more weight or more reps or more time under load on a workout to workout basis, many people are under the impression that this is overtraining. No, this is not overtraining. I'm going to explain exactly why. Your nervous system adapts very quickly to whichever exercise you're doing. Your body finds a way to use whatever muscles it has available more effectively and efficiently to overcome the demand or the stress the environment is placing on it. That's why neurological adaptations happen very quickly. What you're noticing when you first start training is a very rapid neurological adaptation, which allows you to do more weight or more reps very quickly, usually on a workout to workout basis. This happens within the first several weeks, probably four to eight weeks. You'll notice a rapid increase in the amount of weight you can do or the amount of reps for whatever weight, mostly neurological adaptations. And then you notice it starts to slow down. First few weeks, you're noticing that you're able to do more weights or more reps almost every workout, and then suddenly you're not. You notice, hey, I've done whatever, 100 kilos or 100 pounds for the last two workouts. I'm not getting any stronger. What do I do? Am I overtraining? No, you're not overtraining. You've just reached the limit of the neurological adaptations that you can make for those particular exercises. Okay. A lot of times when people get to this position, they send me a message or they, you know, they ask me what to do. Hey, I... I haven't gone up in weight in three exercises. What should I do? The answer is you do nothing because this is the exact moment where your body will actually start to grow contractile elements in order to improve your muscle's ability to produce force. So look at it this way. Say you got, your body's kind of like a company, right? So say you got a hundred muscle fibers, kind of like a hundred employees of a particular company. And we need to increase the output of this company or the production of this company. We want this company to produce more toothpicks. What we can do first and what your, a company would do first is find a way to get these current 100 employees to work more effectively, more efficiently, more optimally to produce more toothpicks. Then there's going to be a certain moment in time where there's only so many toothpicks this 100 employees can produce without adding additional employees. So we will look at this using these 100 employees as efficiently as possible as the neurological adaptation. Then there's going to be a point where you know, that 100 employees can't produce any more toothpicks. Now, what do we need to do in order to produce more toothpicks at that point? We need to bring in more employees. Just like when your body new exercise is going to use whatever muscle fibers it has more efficiently, more effectively, more economically in order to produce more force for that movement. But then there's going to be a point where you're using your muscles as well as you can, but you still are placing a demand on that muscle to produce more force. Now your body has to take it to the next level. Just like the company bringing in more employees, your muscles have to bring in more contractile elements, actinomyosins in order to produce more force, okay? This is what happens generally around, I would say maybe the six to 12 week mark. Generally, it's different for everybody, of course. You get to the point where you notice, whoa, I'm not able to do any more weight on every single workout. Am I doing something wrong? No. Body has learned, the body has is near, neared the limit of the neurological adaptation, whether it actually reaches this limit completely, who knows? This is the exact moment that your body is going to start building more contractile elements to overcome 
the demand the environment is placing on it. Weight training. This is the period of time where people generally ask me, what do I do? What do I change? I'm not getting any stronger. And my answer is, you do nothing. Changing something is the worst thing you can do because you're generally going to reset some sort of neurological adaptation at the exact moment where your body can't produce any more neurological adaptation and it's forced to bring in more contractile elements, a.k.a. muscle growth. So when you see yourself start to plateau, that is when your body's actually going to start growing muscle. And this is what people misinterpret as overtraining. All right? Keep in mind, there will be a point where you may only see improvements in strength maybe on a month-to-month -month basis or every two months. It'll, you'll get to a point where your improvements in strength are so slow they're not even noticeable on a workout-to-workout -workout basis. And then there will be a point where you will not improve in strength at all anymore. There will be a limit. You cannot get stronger forever. There will be a point where it stops. Okay. But when you get to this point, you have to realize you're also not getting any weaker. Okay. You're not going to get stronger indefinitely throughout the rest of your life. All right. So when people stop getting stronger or people notice Another reason people may think they're overtraining is that they're not growing muscle at the rate that they desire. You know, many people might be under the interpretation they're going to gain 20 pounds in a month, and they don't. So they start to blame other things. You know, people who do more higher volume bodybuilding workouts, they think they're not training enough. People in the high intensity training community think they're training too much, but they're both wrong. The truth is, you're probably just not growing muscle to the level of a genetic freak, which is what you probably want. But normal individuals, I'm not even gonna say average, I'm just gonna say normal. Normal people grow muscle relatively slowly over a longer period of time. So sometimes people blame overtraining for why they're not growing tons of muscle. This is also incorrect. So what does overtraining actually look like? Simple. If you are overtraining, you'll know it. You will feel lethargic. You'll feel run down. You'll feel like you need a heck of a lot more sleep. You'll feel like you got run over by a truck. You might feel kind of achy, kind of weak. You may go into the gym and not have that aggression or that tenacity or that motivation to push really hard. You may go to the gym and say, wow, I don't have it in me. These are generally decent signs of overtraining. Okay, so if you start to experience this, this is what you do. First, I recommend you just reduce the volume per workout first without touching the frequency. Some high intensity training advocates, um, generally people who are new to it, don't know as much as they think they know, they will tell you to keep adding rest days. You know, well, you know, if, if you're feeling overtrained, add a rest day. If you still feel overtrained, add another, add another, add another. Then you get to the point where you're training once every 900 days. You don't want to do that. You don't want to keep adding rest days. The first thing you want to do is reduce your volume. Say you're doing a full body workout. Say it's 12 exercises, whatever. Remove one or two exercises from that workout. And then maybe create an A, B routine, sort of a split routine, where you're going to get back to those exercises in a slightly different routine. If you want help designing A, B routines, learning how to push really hard, training to failure correctly, click the link in the description below and join my coaching program. I can help you put all this together in a way that's going to help you see optimal growth without overtraining. Okay. So the first step, reduce volume. Potentially, you may need to reduce frequency as well. You may need to add a rest day. After you reduce the volume, that still may be necessary. But this is generally going to come way down the road, months down the road. This is not going to happen in eight weeks where you need to drastically shift your volume and your frequency unless you are really, really good at training very, very hard, okay? So those are the symptoms of overtraining. You will know it. It will be undeniable. You'll feel like trash, all right? Overtraining is not, you know, when you're not growing at your desired rate, when you're not getting strong on a workout-to-workout -workout basis. Overtraining is when you start to produce adverse effects, a reduction in physical capacity, 
rather than an increase in physical capacity. The purpose of exercise is to increase your physical capacity through improvements in muscular strength, size, cardiovascular and metabolic efficiency, and bone and connective tissue strength, the general trainable factors of functional ability. That's what exercise is for. Now, when you start to reduce muscular strength, now we're going the opposite direction, that's overtraining. A lot of the high intensity training community defines overtraining as doing any more. That is absolutely, uh, that is the lowest amount required to stimulate an adaptive response. While I see some logic behind that, the illogical part of that is that we don't actually know what each individual's minimal required amount is to stimulate an adaptive response. Therefore, it's kind of impossible to tell if an individual is actually doing more than is minimally required. It's very difficult. You know, you'll be able to see it through keeping records over a long period of time, but splitting hairs like that, it's not really going to do you any good. It's just going to drive you crazy. That's why, you know, I kind of like to approach training in high intensity training in general is just train hard, as hard as you're capable of. Don't do too much to where you're producing too much stress to recover from and reducing physical capacity over training. Don't do it too often to where you're wearing yourself out, reducing physical capacity. Train too frequently and move relatively slowly so you reduce shearing force and don't beat up your joints. Okay, that's how I like to look at training. But once you get to the point where you're splitting all these hairs and you know, trying to tweak all these small variables, thinking that's gonna it's gonna take you from 160 pounds to 220 pounds of muscle. Well, guess what? You're wasting your time because it's not. So, most of you guys, you're not overtraining. Don't worry about it. Don't obsess over getting stronger in every single workout. Don't obsess over growing muscle quickly because for most of you, you're you're probably not gonna grow muscle very very quickly. You know, Dr. Stuart, Stuart Phillips, in um, one of his papers that studied the actual structural changes of muscle growth, found that a lot of people will see a 5 to 30% increase in cross-sectional area or home muscle volume um, over the course of, a, I believe it was a 12 or 16-week training program. But, you know, it's 5 to 30% increase in cross-sectional area, something that's like, you know, going to take you from looking like average to Chris Bumstead. No, no, it's going to be relatively slow. So just be patient with it. Okay. If you want to learn how to do this properly, how to train your muscles optimally for improvements, muscle size and strength, how to do it efficiently, only two workouts a week without destroying your joints in the process, go to goldenarrowsystem.com. It's a great workout approach that's going to save you a lot of time, see you very, 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 and show you very, very, very good results. And hit the like and the subscribe and the bell notification icon so you can be notified when I drop more high intensity training videos, or just videos about other fitness topics in general. All right, take care.